In this episode, International Chest Day. But does it have to be? The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, the bacon is sizzling. Welcome to the Daily Swole. Welcome, everyone, to episode 276 of The Daily Mother Swole, the most muscular podcast in the realm, because when I flex, you flex, we all flex our biceps. We are large, we are in charge, and the nipples are hot. So we're ready to get started. Episode 276. Today is International Chest Day. It is swole season. Uh, so although Everest and K2 want to play... Today is not their day. International Chess Day, we are talking about Monday, 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 Swolapalooza. I like that, Ian. Holy shit, I like that one. So thank you for sharing this broadcast. We certainly do not have enough heads in here, so make sure you are blasting this and let everyone know that Swole, Papa Swolio fuck enormous, is about to go off the rails. Today is International Chess Day. That's what we call it. It's a day where everyone goes to the gym and says, hmm, today I'm going to do some chess. I'm going to work my man titties or my lady tits. But does it have to be International Chess Day? Does it have to be Chess Day on a Monday? Where did this start? I don't have that information, to be honest with you. I have no idea where this started or why this started. It's one of the classic lifts. I'm sure you can Wikipedia that. Maybe it started back in Arnold's day. I'm sure that's when this type of training split because they always usually did chest on a Monday. Uh, But it doesn't have to be. And what determines your Monday workout? What determines your Monday workout pretty much comes down to your split and what availability you have to equipment, what availability you have to your training schedule for that week if you're planning on doing, you know, three days a week, four days a week. So what you're doing on a Monday does not have to be chest. And that's always kind of been the theme. And yeah, I see that, Eric, you do legs, you can get it over with earlier. A lot of times I do that as well. I'll, and that's really what I'm getting into in this first part, is that it does not have to be inter- International Chess Day. It does not have to be Monday Chess Day. You can do a different workout based on your split, but I think a lot of people that are getting into these workout programs that see chest on Monday, they automatically gravitate towards chest because that's what most programs start with. That's what they see most people do. If you work out with a partner, if you work out with a couple friends, that's what you normally go to do on a Monday. And honestly, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not, you can't do this. It's not the way to make gains. It is a great way to make gains. It's a great way because you're lifting weights and it's been done for many, many years and it works. It works. So you can do yoga on a Monday. You could do legs on a Monday. It depends on how frequently you do those body parts. When's the last time you did those body parts? Because here's the thing. If you did chest on Monday this week, but then the following Monday, you're like, I don't want to do chest. Let me do chest on Friday. Well, in reality, that's almost two weeks since your previous chest workout. If you did chest on Monday one week, but then Friday the next week, you're almost leaving, you know, it's like 12 days between chest workouts. So you have to be aware of that. When you change your schedule and your split, be aware of when the last time you train that muscle, because you can start with whatever you want on a Monday, but think about more, more along the lines of how long it's been since you prior hit that body part rather than what you're doing on a Monday, what you're doing on a Tuesday. So it's really going to come down to when the last time you hit that body part was. And that's a very important uh, thing to think about. So it's not Monday. It doesn't have to be a Monday. It's just a training day. How many days of training do you have available this week? Is it four? Do you have three available? Do you have six available? And then when's the prior time that you hit that body part? Because you can hit, for hypertrophy, you can hit a body part anywhere from like, let's say, four or five days up until like, you know, seven or longer. depends on the body part, depends on the volume. But generally, a little bit more frequently than once per week is better, meaning once every seven days, usually maybe once every six, five, even four, depending on the volume and depending on how hard you're training. So four or five day split is usually pretty good for a basic standard split. And then there are a lot of variations, you know, from that. So it does not have to be chest. You can mix it up and you can mix it up with different ways. You can do things based on instinct. Sometimes you can go to the gym and so let's say you're not sore. Everything is up for grabs. What do you want to start with? You can just go in and be like, mm, I'm gravitated towards the squat rack for whatever reason. I want to do legs today. You can do this as part of your warm up. 
on your way to the gym, you're thinking about what you want to do, you're on the step mill, you're doing your cardio warm up or something like that, and you're thinking, what do I feel like? Using instinctual training, what does your body feel like doing today? What does today feel like? Doesn't always have to be written in stone. It helps. It helps. It doesn't always have to be what, sometimes you have to listen to how you feel. You can ignore your body and be like, well, that's just my body telling me things, but that's not necessarily the way it is. You can interpret your body's signals different ways. It depends on how well you know yourself. So you can either ignore and say, well, that's just how I feel. That's not exactly what I need to do. Or I feel this way. I feel like doing legs today instead of chest. So that's what is pulling me harder and harder towards you know, doing a leg workout. And that's instinctually what my body needs. So you have to understand if it's what your body needs or your body's just telling you signals out of habit. So you have to separate the habit from the reality. And that could be a challenge and that's a process. So it's not always, you know, black and white like that. So start with something that's sometimes different. Mix it up. Start with a different exercise. You might get to the gym. How about this? You plan. How about this? You plan this scenario. You plan for chest day. You go to the gym expecting to do chest on Monday. And then you go there and all the machines are taken. It's packed. You go there at like prime time. All the benches are filled. The, you know, the free weights are filled, dumbbells, barbells. The machine presses are filled. Unless you want to start with push-ups and do a lot of push-ups, there's no chest exercise or equipment really available. So it throws a little monkey wrench into your system. Either you start with a different exercise for that body part that you normally won't do, and that could be a good mix-up, or you start with a different body part. Now, if you get your mind focused on one body part and you go into the gym and things flip and all of a sudden you're trying to do something different, like a completely different body part, that might throw off your, you know, your, your planning a little bit. And that might throw you off a little bit too much because you're visualizing one thing and then it's like too much of an extreme change. Depends on what your personality is like. Can you all of a sudden flip the script like that and still attack or does that throw you off so much you can't focus on what you're doing and you get discouraged. You have to understand yourself. And it's not bad one way or the other, but you have to understand that you have to react to your situation and you have to know how you react and how to deal with it for yourself personally. Some people could be like, ah, fuck it, I'll do legs today. Or I'll just do arms today. For me, knowing that if I go in knowing that I'm going to do, let's say, chest and triceps or chest and whatever, it's easier for me if I go and I can't do that body part or I don't feel like it, I'll do back or something upper body it's too much of a mental shift for me to go into leg mode. I like to know I'm doing legs. I like to go to the gym to do leg workout. I can't effectively, and I've learned I don't even bother anymore, to just, hey, I guess I'll just do some legs today. That's not how I treat my leg day. I go hard, and I like to go hard, and I love that. So my favorite day is leg day, and I want to make sure that I give 100% effort towards that. So I don't like getting, I don't like surprise leg day, let's put it that way. No one likes surprise butt sex. I don't like surprise leg day. That's how that works right there. I don't like surprise leg day. And that's just me personally. You might be different, but that's how I, that's how Papa fucking Swolio uh, enormous rolls. So start with a different exercise. Maybe start with push-ups. Maybe start with flies. Maybe start with pec deck. But to do what others won't, that's really going to be the big kicker. You have to do what others won't. You have to do what others won't do, what others aren't willing to do. And that could be starting with a different exercise. That could be starting with a isolation exercise before a bench press, starting with a fly, starting with a cable crossover, starting with a pec deck. You need to go at it regardless. You're there to do battle. You're there to do work. You have options. You have things you can manipulate, but you have to do what others aren't willing to do. Some people aren't willing to fall out of their routine. Some people aren't willing to do a different exercise. You'll see them. You'll see these fucking people waiting at the bench. They'll say, oh, how many more sets do you have? And I'll be like, oh, you know, three or four. I'm not sure. I usually say, I don't know. And no one that's done this to me probably is watching right now. But if you come up to me and you say, oh, how many more sets do you have? More often than not, I'll say, I don't know. And they look at me all confused. What do you mean you don't know? They don't say that, but I could see in their eyes. What do you mean you don't know? And the reason is because I do an exercise until I'm done. I do it until I'm done. Sometimes I'll have an idea of how many reps and I'll loosely count reps or I'll have an idea of how many sets I'm doing. But when I go for like a pec deck or a bench press, I'll do it until I feel I'm done with this exercise. I don't do three sets. I don't do five sets. I'll do sets until I feel like I'm going to do this other exercise now. I might do six sets of incline bench. I might do 10 sets, but I do incline bench until I'm done with incline bench. 
and I go on to flies, and I'll do flies until I'm done with flies. I don't, I don't segregate, I don't discriminate three sets here or four sets here. I'm doing five sets today. No, I'll do an exercise until I'm done, and I'll do the next exercise until I'm done. So when someone comes out, up to me in the, in the gym, how many sets do you have? I don't know. I'll be done. Maybe one or two more. And they're like, well, what do you mean? How many more? I said, and then I'll get pissed off. I'll say, maybe one, maybe 10. I don't know. Because I am there. Papa Swole was there first. I planted my flag. And I will finish when I feel like I'm finished. And that's just because I do it instinctually in my subcategory. Now, you can do it instinctually when you go to the gym. What do I feel like working today? And then you kind of go to the area of the gym, the exercise that you're gravitationally pulled towards. You know, you feel. Where's the energy in the gym pulling you towards? I kind of do that energy in a subsection of my workout. I'll do chest, but I will go to an exercise because of feel. I'll start somewhere and they'll go based on instinct. I feel like doing more. Maybe I'll go on the bench press or I'll go on the incline fly and I'll do that for 20 sets and I'll do that for an hour because I feel like that's what I need to do. And I just crush that exercise. My body is just reacting well to that one exercise and I just crush and crush and then I'm done. I'm done. I mean, come on, you do 20 sets of flies. Do you need to do more for your workout? No. And I'll just go hard. But if I'm getting a good pump on a certain exercise, why leave it? Why leave the pump? Don't leave the pump. Don't leave the pump. That's the title of my next New York Times bestseller. Don't leave the pump. Don't leave the pump. Leave no pump behind. Leave no pump behind. So do what others won't, do what others aren't willing to do. And I like to go by instinct, honestly. So you can have your set schedule. You can have chest on a Monday. You can have legs on a Monday. You can do that regularly for years and still see progress. You don't have to do night and day, you know, black and white changes. You can just tweak your workout with rep schemes. You can tweak your workout with what exercise you start with. Just subtle differences is enough for variety. You don't have to change your entire workout uh, programming. I would say every once in a while, it's good to do a full body workout. You know, you don't necessarily want to always do chest by itself or back by itself. You want to integrate different muscle groups with each other. But that's why I promote weight training and yoga because you get that synergy. You get that inter, not intra, you get that intermuscular coordination with yoga. So that covers your total body workouts. I don't personally like total body weight training workouts. I do them sometimes, rarely, but I do them. But that's why I do my weight training and I do my segmented strength training. But then yoga gives me that integrated strength training and endurance training and stabilization training. So you get the best of both worlds by combining resistance training with yoga. And I'm telling you, spend all the hours you want doing cardio. Do cardio until you fucking bleed from the eyes. You want results? Do your weight training, do your strength training, and do yoga. And the program that I have coming out is going to really uh, be focused all on that. So stay tuned for that. That is coming out uh, soon. And I will tell you guys and be announcing how you can uh, begin the process to get access to uh, the program. And I'll be announcing more details on that in the very near future. So stay tuned for that. So subtle adjustments, what your goals are, what your training split is, and what your instincts are. Listen to your body. Don't ignore it. Your body is telling you things for a reason. Have an open, have open lines of communication with your body because that's really important when it comes to how you organize your training splits, how much time you have available, what your experience, what your goals are, and what you feel like doing. And I always say that fitness is not meant to be entertaining. If you look at fitness as fun, you are sacrificing results because fitness should be exciting and it should be illuminating and it should be results driven like any kind of job. If you look for fitness as fun, you start going off the wrong direction. I'm not saying you can't find yourself spiritually. I'm not saying you can't, uh, you know, have this kind of enlightenment from your training, from yoga and from fitness and from weight training, but I'm talking about entertainment. Like, Ooh, I'm watching a movie. I'm going to a party. If you don't look at fitness as work and hard work, you are sacrificing results. You're sacrificing progress. You have to take it seriously, but that does not mean that you can't do things that you enjoy and what you feel like doing. So you have to separate the entertainment to what your body is telling you in the sense of, we should be doing this because we need this rather than, oh, I want to do this because this is going to be fun. All right. So separate those things in your mind. Keep those segmented and understand what your body is telling you when it's telling you one or the other. So start listening, become more self-aware, start paying attention to what your body is telling you when it's hungry, when it's cold, when it's 
thirsty, when it's sad, when it's sluggish, when it's bloated, when you're sore, listen to your body because it tells you things all the time. You just have to start paying more attention. So thank you for joining me for episode 276 of The Daily Mother Swole, the most muscular podcast in the realm, because when I flex, you flex, we all flex. Ah, biceps. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks for watching me live every day at 12 noon Eastern time on Facebook at Swole Normus, watching on YouTube, also at Swole Normus, and listening on SoundCloud and iTunes for the podcast. I will be on later, most likely, for a Q&A. So if you aren't following me and have the live notifications turned on, my Facebook page, I also do random live Q&As. So make sure you have those notifications turned on so you can join me live for my Q and Swole, as I call it. And you can ask any questions you like. So show up there and be dazzled by gains and knowledge and probably a lot of caffeine. So I'll see you guys later for the Q and Swole. So turn on live notifications. I'll see you tomorrow for episode 277 of The Daily Mother Swole. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your Monday. Premium members, I will see you at 1 p.m. for your accountability meeting. So Swole Normous Premium, see you at 1 p.m. Everyone else, peace out. See you tomorrow. (laughs) 